everybody. I'm doing a video, as promised, to share how I do my online gigs for my Patreon patrons. I have quite a few musician friends who, whose touring plans for the foreseeable future are really up in the air and for whom online gigs might be a really good way of reaching their audiences, being able to play their music to their fans. So I thought I'd just share my stuff with the world. There are many ways to do this. The way I've developed is just what I do, but it's not the only way. There are many ways. Please, let's share with each other different methods because there may be something that's better than this. It gives you all a flavour of what my Friday videos are like. I make one of these every week and there's been one about songwriting, there's been one about touring. So anyone who actually likes the look of this video and wants to have one once a week, please do sign up to Patreon. So what you need, what I, what I need to do what I do is my laptop with its FaceTime camera. Woo, hello. An external hard drive very important. I need my audio hardware. I use a Focusrite Scarlet box which allows me to use Pro Tools, that's what I use as my audio, but you may have different setups, but whatever you do to record your music, the thing that you can plug a microphone into and plug your computer into. Um, you need a YouTube account, well I need my YouTube account. There are different ways of doing this, different platforms, FaceTime do a FaceTime live thing, but I find YouTube live really good. Um, I also Use YouTube in, in conjunction with a soft piece of software called OBS, which is free to download. And what OBS does is, is put the audio and visual signals together and buffers them so that if you're doing a gig, the most important thing for people is that the music and the sound are to, and the picture are together rather than it being in real time. So it sacrifices live being able to talk to each other -ness, in service of audio quality, which I think most musicians would prioritise. I think if you're going to sell tickets, you also need a PayPal account. And you need some fans. Really important. <laughs> because I use Patreon as my platform for doing online gigs, there's a kind of payment implicit in that setup. But if you wanted people to buy tickets, you could announce your gig a few days before or a week before and ask people to send you some money over PayPal. And in return, you send them the link to the live gig. Okay. Um... And on the day, really, I would be kind to yourself and give yourself an hour or two to get yourself set up from an audio perspective. Um, and then the next thing is I'm going to show you how to tether YouTube and OBS so that you can get ready to start your stream. OK, so here's my YouTube page. And if I go to my little icon here, there's an option called YouTube Studio. And if we pick that... This opens up. This is all your videos. And if you click into videos here, you get a combination of videos that you've uploaded. Here are all my Patreon videos. But also live. And if you click over to live, you'll see all your live gigs. So those are the three that I've done since the beginning of the year. But I actually have done quite a... I used to do them on stageit.com in years gone by. So to make a new video, you go up to this button here called create. And if you click go live, it takes you to this special area on YouTube where you can do live streaming. I can uh, copy and paste my settings if I want to, but I'm going to create a new stream. So you give your stream a title, you can schedule it for later. Let's say test, test gig. I'm not going to make mine public because <laughs> I do it. I'm going to delete it later. But it's music. It's not made for kids. We can schedule it for later if we want, which is kind of cool. So you can set it up now, but we can say it's going to go live later. Um, I haven't quite worked out how to use that yet. I'm going to create my stream. And when you create a stream, you get this window, which is like a preview. If you look down here, there's something called a key. It's these dots. You can un we can reveal it to to show your unique one. I want you to copy that stream key because it's going to come in useful later. And you can just leave this preview window open for now because the next part of a music gig setup that I would use is to um, open 
some software called OBS. I'm going to open it now. And OBS will talk with YouTube to create um, a buffering so that the audio is really protected. And what it means is that your gig may be on a 20 or 30 second delay, but that the audio and video togetherness is prioritised. So this is OBS, which you can download for free. Um, it's like studio software. The important bits for OBS to work with YouTube are that you put in your key, which I believe is in the settings. So if you put in that, copy and paste that key here in settings, you go to stream. And if you pick YouTube and you put your key in there, they are, they get tethered together, which I've done already. I think you only have to do it once. And once they're together, they're together. It's like a pairing. And once OBS and YouTube are tethered, what you want to do is over here on sources, on video capture device, you want to make sure that it's your FaceTime camera, your computer's internal camera. I would imagine if you join another camera up, that's where you could tell it to go there. This is the important bit for musicians, audio. You want to make sure that it's your audio hardware and not your internal laptop because that's where you get shit sound from. <laughs> so make sure that you see your device there as the audio input for OBS. And then what happens is the audio is really lovely and it's all your microphones rather than the internal laptop computer, which uh, microphone, which sounds rubbish. To get OBS going, what's really important, the other thing is to plug in an external hard drive because it's going to, OBS records your stream and it's a really big file and if you have that happening on your internal hard drive of your computer, you may well come into difficulties quite quickly, the whole thing will snarl up. So again in settings, just make sure that wherever it's recording to, you want to make sure that the, let's click through these recording path here on output is in this pivot is the name of this hard drive I've got here just make sure the recording path is on your external hard drive with lots of space and then you won't hit any problems okay so you want to start streaming and then if you go back to YouTube go back to your YouTube window and this is the preview window that's me about 20 seconds ago you're gonna see me wave I'm gonna wave now and that's me raising the camera to film this you can see the lag but the idea of the lag is to preserve the audio visual harmony if you know what I mean and the buffering how long it's taking for me to wave. We'll see it in a second. There I am. Last minute me. Anyway, now we've got this working, all you have to do is hit that. Looks like you're ready. Click here to start streaming. And you're good to go. You also want to uh, dress your set. As you can see behind me, I've got fairy lights in my guitars, but I'll show you a little moment when I was preparing so you can see what's actually around me. <laughs> Very importantly, connect via Ethernet if you possibly can, rather than going over your Wi-Fi connection. It'll just make your internet connection that much more reliable. And the most important thing is, I would say, use your microphones instead of the internal laptop. When we're all about music, I'd say the most important thing is that it sounds great and you can get a nice mix on your audio setup that your internal laptop mic just won't be able to handle. And then go live. I can't wait to hear about all your gigs. Please leave in comments below. Tell me everything. Tell me things that are wrong with this setup. Tell me how you experienced it. Tell me things that could be done better. I just think we all need to help each other right now. And I really hope that all my musician friends and everybody out there trying to make music and trying to make a living out of music can use this opportunity to reach their fans in a different way. I'm not saying that online streaming gigs is a substitute for going out live. It's a really, in a normal world, it's a really nice addition to, to gigging. 
but I think right now it might it might help. So good luck and tell me everything. Bye. Bye.